Bitcoin land sees new allegations of massive volume faking on most major exchanges. Tim Draper makes an incredible proposition in Argentina and Bitcoin does things we don't always like it to do. Two quick announcements before we jump into today's news. Consensus, crypto's premier annual event is coming up soon. It is a fantastic networking opportunity for any company involved in the cryptocurrency space or for those looking to get involved as well as fun for the enthusiast. You can get $200 off of the ticket price using the link down below. Also, please help me spread the word about my free cryptocurrency education course and be in to win $100 worth of Bitcoin for sharing the course with your friends. Twitter, Google, and Facebook all prohibit me from running ads to promote this content, so I need your help to get the word out. I am currently running a retweet competition over on Twitter. Just retweet it to be in to win and tag a friend that you think may benefit from learning about cryptocurrencies. The big story of today, volume faking. Bitwise's report about volume faking is making waves in the cryptoverse coming only days after The Tie reported that 87% of volume is being faked. The Bitwise report builds on the previous report stating that 95% of the volume on unregulated exchanges is indeed fake. If you have been in crypto for a while, this will not surprise you. But it's also not really okay that we have so internalized how normal this kind of bad behavior and bad business practices that seeing this kind of scamming going on is kind of just another day in crypto for most of us. And that's kind of weird how we've got so far. The exchanges doing the volume faking have various nuances of motivation and various levels of faking when it comes down to it, but it all comes back to ranking higher on websites like CoinMarketCap in order to attract more retail investors, more whale traders, and of course, showing that the exchange has the liquidity needed to attract recent ICO listings and thus be able to charge them those sweet, sweet listing fees. Actual daily spot price volume is closer to $270 million, not $6 billion. That is a lot of fake, fake volume. Now, all of this may have you worried that, oh God, the doom and gloomers are right. We're all going to die. Bitcoin's going to zero. Warren Buffett was right all of this time. Repent now. Ah! Hold your horses there, guys because Bitwise provided some great perspective on this matter as well. As a percentage of market cap versus volume compared to gold, gold's daily percentage is 0.53% versus Bitcoin, which is 0.39%, which indicated that actually Bitcoin is a very healthy market without all the fake volume. Another super interesting point is the importance of the futures markets in comparison to real volume. Because when we have this fakey McFakerson volume going on, the futures markets look very insignificant. But with real volume considered, it turns out that the CME is doing big futures market volumes as a total percentage of the real volume of the Bitcoin markets. And with BACT being a futures market ticking time bomb in terms of getting approved, we will see the futures industry be a big part of the Bitcoin monetary equation. It also allows us to understand why the ETF, when it gets launched, is going to be so significant. And as a very curious addition to the volume faking, it may actually be a blessing in disguise of sorts, depending, I guess, on your perception of the Bitcoin ETF, because it shows that regulated exchanges are playing by the rules. 
It shows that the market size of regulated trading is indeed actually very significant. That surveillance measures are indeed being effective. That manipulation on regulated markets is not working to greatly sway markets. And that in terms of the influence of overseas exchanges faking volume, a good move against that kind of behavior would actually be to create a big liquid regulated product like a Bitcoin ETF. Still though, we have no time frame for a Bitcoin ETF to be approved. It could be soon, it could be years. As a note though, Bitwise has provided all of this market research that I presented here to you to the SEC as part of their conversation with the SEC about creating a Bitcoin ETF. The first deadline for the Bitwise ETF is on April 1st. Van X ETF deadline is on April 6th. We're probably going to see more delays when those deadlines comes up, but we could always get a big surprise. Anything's possible in crypto land. In terms of what you and I can do to actually help the volume issues, support exchanges that provide honest reporting of volume as much as we can anyway. The major exchanges which are reporting fair volume make up the majority of the actual volume of Bitcoin. Most of these are regulated. The exchanges are Binance, Bitfinex, Kraken, Bitstamp, Coinbase, Bitflyer, Gemini, ItBit, Bittrex, and Poloniex. Now, they only accounted for exchanges with more than a million dollars in daily Bitcoin volume. Other exchanges like Liquid usually make this list, but perhaps it was excluded due to most volume being in yen on Liquid or, for example, Bitpanda with euros. However, the problem is that not all coins are available on these exchanges. So inevitably, you will have to use some super random shady crypto exchange to get that rare coin that you're after. Just try to limit your exposure to these exchanges. Use a DEX when possible, something like IDEX to grab those rare coins because the fakers, when they go down, Probably going to take a lot of money with them. Also, in response to this, coin market cap has come out saying that it will be making many changes to help address all of the fake volume tsunami that is currently washing over crypto land. So expect some big number variations in volume coming to a coin market cap near you. So what happens when all of this fake volume is cleaned up? Will the price of Bitcoin crash dramatically? Well, not necessarily. Some exchanges faking volume does not equate to an inevitably lower price for Bitcoin. Although I could foresee some shocks as the data is adjusted on places like CoinMarketCap, for example, because the volume is an important factor in the overall crypto industry but people are still paying around $4,000 for a Bitcoin. Exchanges are trading with themselves to make themselves look more important, but that does not inherently mean that Bitcoin's market value will change because the real demand comes from the exchanges providing real volume and real trades. And one thing that Bitwise has also not accounted for in all of this is the OTC market, which continues to thrive, but remains a place of mystery in the shadows in terms of the volume that actually happens there. My stance on Bitcoin does not change because of some fakers out there trading with each other or the effects that this may have in the short term on the market. The next bull run in crypto will end up making 2017 look like the bull runs before it, a tiny blip on the radar. The opportunity to be investing in Bitcoin at these prices is an absolute pleasure. I also liked Bitcoin back at 6K. I also liked Bitcoin at 7,500 and I will love Bitcoin big time if we actually break below $3,000, which I still think is unlikely to happen, but depending on the shakeouts that we could see, you never know. If you missed the last bull run, 
Well, you know what? Welcome to the party because investing now or investing last month or investing next month will be a massive opportunity for the savvy investor. On to our next story. Tim Draper met personally with President Mauricio Macri of Argentina where he presented the idea that we would all present to a head of state if we had the audience with them. And that was to make Bitcoin the national currency of Argentina. Nice one, Tim. Quoting Tim Draper, he said, I suggested he make Bitcoin a national currency and to bring in 5G and let the market figure it out and build all the roads and everything else for him. Draper also went on to state that it is now a good time to adopt the technology in Argentina, arguing that this will provide complete changes in banking, commerce, and overall in the financial system. Tim Draper also proposed a bet with the Argentine president, which he explains here while riding around with the guys from La Bitcoinetta. Would you like to tell us how, what did you talk with uh, President Macri today? Well, yes, we, we had quite, a, quite an ordeal. Um, I, I bet him one Bitcoin against 400,000 pesos, which I realize now is worth more than one Bitcoin. Today. That they will be worth, that my Bitcoin's gonna be worth more than the 400,000 pesos in a year. In a different interview on the same day, he also reiterated his stance that he believes Bitcoin is going to be worth $250,000 in 2022. There will come a day when a country adopts Bitcoin as a recognized currency, perhaps it will not replace the local fiat currency, but it can act as a layer two payment option that's actually used in a mainstream way and promoted by the government, or can of course back fiat issued like we have the old school gold backed fiat that doesn't really exist anymore. But more probably is that a country will start adding Bitcoin as a strategic reserve like gold. The only question is which country is going to do this first. P.S. When will Bulgaria make a move on its Bitcoin stash? Bulgaria back in the day confiscated more than 200,000 Bitcoin from a hacker group. They have been sitting on that Bitcoin ever since. Hmm. And finally, a compelling story about the power of Bitcoin. Hamas. Yes, those guys. Hamas is asking for Bitcoin donations, particularly the Al Qassam Brigades, which is the military wing of Hamas, calling for those who support the Palestinian resistance forces to donate Bitcoin. Now, Lark, WTF, why would you bring up such an inflammatory story? Stick to crypto, bro! Surely you must have another story out there, Lark, about someone accepting Bitcoin in exchange for coffee or puppies or something not threatening, something banal. Well, look, I'm sure that some cafe somewhere just started accepting cryptocurrencies. Great for them. But I bring this story up as a point of belief in decentralization and censorship resistance. Because I'm sure that if you know anything about Hamas, you probably have a rather negative viewpoint about who they are and what they do. And most Western nations consider them a terrorist group. Now, without going into the details of Israel's apartheid state or the injustices inflicted upon Gaza and the Palestinians, which particularly with Gaza, has functionally become the world's largest open-air prison and live human weapons testing facility. Nor will we, of course, discuss the hypocrisy of a nation which runs the terrorist drone program calling someone else a terrorist. But instead, instead, I want to focus on this. I actually think it is a good thing that Hamas is able, and I want to say keyword able, to receive Bitcoin. Should someone, of course, feel the need to give it to them? God knows why you would do that. And I know, 
I know, I probably just triggered a whole lot of people. Before you go down to the comment section and start tearing me to pieces, just think about this for a section, for a second, because it's not actually my intention to trigger you. I honestly don't like Hamas, or that Hamas is receiving more funding for its military because it will only fuel violence, which is something that I completely oppose. Which is why I also oppose the billions of dollars of American taxpayer dollars, for example, that go to the Israeli military to fund violence. But, even if it is a hard pill to swallow for many of us, this is censorship resistance. This is Bitcoin. Much like freedom of speech, censorship resistance is proven by the hard cases, not by the easy cases. The truth is that Bitcoin knows no borders, it knows no religion, no sanctions, no sex, no political ideology, no human emotion. Bitcoin doesn't care about any of that stuff. It can't. It was designed not to care which stands in direct opposition to the fiat banking world, which is driven by political ideology and uses sanctions as a weapon of financial terrorism. The tough reality of Bitcoin is that it will be used by people that we don't like to do things that we don't approve of. And it will also be used by people we like to do nice things and to make the world a better place. But to ensure that happens, we have to keep it open for all uses. Because while some may choose to send Hamas money to buy weapons of death, I choose to give to organizations like Zam Zam Water, which is providing clean drinking water for the people of Gaza and educating thousands of Gazan youth so that these students can have a better future. That's also made possible by Bitcoin. Anyway, just my two Satoshis. You will let me know what you think about any of today's news stories down below in the comment section. Thank you so, so much for watching today's video. I really, really, as always, appreciate the time that you take out of your day to come over here and watch me talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Seriously, it's super awesome. So thank you so, so much. And if you did enjoy this video, leave a thumbs up on it. You can also subscribe to the channel if you are new around here and hit the notification bell down below to stay up to date when I put out a new video. Long live the blockchain and peace out till next time.